Um, can you share any of the constraints that you've learned about or the differences in Keyshot Python that a yeah. new or experienced developer should be aware of? Yes. Well, I mean, for the experienced developers out there, I can just tell you that, um, you know, the first thing you will notice uh, when you start scripting in, in uh, Keyshot is that uh, if you're using an environment, uh, an IDE like PyCharm or Microsoft Visual Studio Code and that sort of thing, so you don't have a direct uh, way of using those editors within the Keyshot environment. You certainly can use those editors on the scripts that you create outside of Keyshot, but it's not a direct uh, coupling of your Keyshot uh, IDE or your, uh, I'm sorry, your Python IDE. And uh, for those of you who don't know what IDE means, that means uh, it's an integrated development environment which makes it far easier to, you know, create your scripts in Python or whatever language you're using uh, because it highlights keywords for functions and variables and arguments and uh, reserved, um, reserved words in the language so that it speeds up the process of, you know, creating the scripts. And as Don mentioned earlier, now with the advent of, uh, AI tools like ChatGPT and others, um, it's these tools are more or less like uh, spell checkers on steroids, I guess. Uh, they're very good at predicting what the next uh, sequence of characters should be or words should be or terms should be in your code. So they help you speed up code, but they're not our code writing, but they're not the be all end all answer for coding yet. I mean, they're getting better, but especially for Keyshot users where the, the, the coding environment is not open source. It, you have to be a Keyshot user to actually use Keyshot scripts. Uh, you have a, um, a development environment that's closed uh, to Keyshot users. And the Python environment itself is proprietary to the Keyshot environment. So uh, you don't install Python on your machine and then let Keyshot use that Python environment. Uh, Keyshot has its own, uh, and you know, it, its own uh, uh, environment. It has a built-in, uh, built in. yeah, built in it's environment. A, Thank you. Yep, it has a built-in right. environment built-in environment. And uh, Keyshot, however, will use the paths on your directory uh, to your Keyshot environment for packages, other packages that you may have installed uh, in your Python environment that you'd like to use in the Keyshot environment. However, you can't use all of the Python uh, libraries that are available in the Py Python ecosystem uh, in Keyshot. For example, one of the things I'll share with you a quick war story from Keyshot that goes way back to 2017. Uh, I was using some modules uh, from a data science library uh, called Anaconda and using in particular NumPy and Pandas, which are popular in the AI development world and data science world. And it worked with Keyshot for a few years until um, Keyshot upgraded their Python environment and told me that it was never supposed to work with those environments because of multi-processing or multi-threading. And just as a heads up, you may not want to include this in the talk, Kareem, or you might want to edit this out because I don't want to slam Keyshot, but that is something that happened to me. Um, so getting back to, so using, I mentioned earlier that, uh, in the built-in Python environment for Keyshot, there's a setting where you can uh, specify the path to your local Keyshot environment so that your uh, Keyshot Python environment can use and import modules from your local Keyshot environment. And it basically shares them. So uh, for example, if you wanna import a module 
like NatSort. NatSort is a handy little module that does sorting of uh, sequences of characters more naturally than the built-in sort module for Python. And it's kind of handy if you're working with a lot of strings or text. And I've used that a lot for sorting uh, things like unusual sequences of part numbers or things with special characters in them uh, or with leading zeros in part numbers uh, in CAD models and that sort of thing. So that sort is handy for that. And you can import that into your Keyshot environment and use it for scripting. Gotcha. And so you're putting that inside of the Keyshot program files, Python libraries. Am I understanding I, that correctly? Yeah. I So for example, uh, I'm going to, I don't know if you can see my screen right now. Yes, sir. Okay. So what I'll do is just bring up the Keyshot console. And if you can see my, you know, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see my yeah. screen here. Uh, I'm running the latest version here of uh, Keyshot Studio, they call it now. Uh, this is 24, 2024.3. And so in the console, this is the scripting console. This is the Python environment that Keyshot provides. And so if I want to import that module that I was mentioning earlier, NetSort. I can do this here. I just type import NetSort. And because I did not get an error message, the Keyshot built-in environment found my NetSort module that I imported on, a, on my own Keyshot environment, and it brought it into this one. So that means it's available for uh, work in the console right now. So um, since we're on that, I mean, for, for people who are beginning uh, uh, Keyshot scripters, you don't have to worry so much about, you know, importing all these special modules. But as you get more and more into the Keyshot scripting environment and, you're, and you may have some more esoteric, uh, you know, or unusual uh, workflow challenges, sometimes you'll want to import modules that uh, will help help speed up your development. So, but for, for the most part, when you're getting started, you don't need to worry about that. And so- Yeah, I still haven't dived into them very much. Yeah, so it depends on, you know, basically what modules are uh, shipped with the standard key, sh key or a Python library and, most of the built-in libraries for Python are sufficient. I mean, it's a very robust development environment, and you can do virtually anything that you need to. Just as like I'd mentioned before, this one particular little uh, library has come in handy for me because of the kind of the work I do. So, and so w that library is located in your Python paths. Is that correct? Correct. So, uh, let's take a look at the preferences window here under Keyshot. And so under the general key uh, tab, I believe it is, I scroll down here and it says use local Python paths, version 3.12 only. You need to make sure this yeah, and again, I think there's a version issue here. I don't know if all Keyshot versions support scripting. So, Don, you'll have to help me out there. But I'm using uh, an enterprise version or, you know, professional version of Keyshot Studio. And all you need to do is select this. Now, I don't need to tell Keyshot anything else because Keyshot will then look for the Keyshot or the Python environment that I'm using on my machine. However, so since I uh, am a little bit more of an advanced user, uh, I use what are called virtual environments for Python. Okay. And for those of you who haven't worked with or heard of that term before, basically virtual environments is a fancy way of saying I've got a throwaway environment where I could import, I could use it you know, specific version of Python and specific versions of various 
modules that I, uh, you know, for my Keyshot scripting. And if I want to use one for a certain workflow, but then have a different environment for another workflow, I can just throw them away or reuse them. They're, they're destructible. They're, and so when I launch my Keyshot, um, environment, I actually do that with uh, a Windows batch script. And um, I can show you that it, just a time saving thing that uh, that I use. In this case, my virtual environment is using Anaconda. So I brought up my uh, Anaconda prompt screen just to show users out there how uh, I launch Keyshot. Uh, within a virtual environment, uh, what's called a Conda environment. And I have a little batch script that allows me to specify the version of Keyshot that I'm using. And so I just type in KS for Keyshot and 24.3 for version 24.3 of Keyshot. And then I say Python, PY, and then 3.12 for the version of Python. And PD just happens to be this happens to have Panda in it, and it's something I've done just for personal reasons over time, but it, I don't actually use Panda in the Keyshot environment, as I mentioned earlier. So anyway, uh, that's all I do, and I hit the return key, and it switches my directory to the scripting environment I want, and then it launches Keyshot for me automatically. So I don't have to go hunting and pecking around with my uh, cursor and my mouse. I can just Bring it, bring this up, and when I'm launching or relaunching Keyshot rapidly, all I have to do is go back to that screen. Okay, so now I'm back in the Keyshot environment, and I'm going to run a script. And so all we have to do is hit the scripting console button in your in your uh, ribbon up here. Now, for those of you who uh, don't see it in your system. You can right click in this area up in the Keyshot environment and you can just click on scripting console and you'll see that little button appear or not appear there. So it's that easy. And then Great um, tip. Uh, I have a, um, a whole bunch of scripts here and I'm just going to run this one for the audience. And I'm going to, uh, I have uh, the first thing I want to show you here is this little checkbox that I created as a helper uh, interface for my script. So within your scripts, you can have multiple different interactive uh, windows, if you will, that will pop up and help you make decisions. And so in this case, it'll become apparent why I did this uh, little window, because I have a bunch of checkboxes that I can set within my window. And here I say, for this particular workflow, I've got items that are checked and unchecked. And so let's, for the sake of kicks here, I'll just click this bottom one, say hub shells unchecked and widgets unchecked. And I hit the OK button. And then another window pops up. And so this is my main window for my interface for this script. So there's a lot going on here. And I'm not going to go through all the items on this, but I just want to the audience to see how complex of a workflow you can uh, code in the Keyshot, Keyshot scripting environment. And for, for folks that are doing high production, high volume uh, work, this can be worth the effort to put together because it can save you not only hours, but days of work. Okay. Yeah. And so um, as I scroll down this particular window, you'll see hub shell colors and widgets colors and the term that I used in that interface window beforehand. And I can click these guys and say, I, these are, these are codes that represent certain colors that I want to, or materials that I want to use in my, uh, in my environment. And if I hit the reset button down here, it gets rid of all of them. And so instead of having to click on each one and unclick each one, these are little time saving tips that for, People that are doing a lot of repetitive work, or they're doing lots of different uh, tests on renders, and they want to try a bunch of different things on different components and different colors and so forth. You can use these checkboxes to uh, enable or disable, you know, either materials or templates or 
you know, models that you're looking at. I mean, you're, it's up to your imagination, but it gives you a lot of power over what you can see and what you or what you want to uh, use in your scripts instead of having to do it by by hand. OK, but, so, yeah, I think using a GUI is definitely um, a lot easier when running the scripts and testing them out. Normally, I would start out with just a really basic script. And once that started working, then I would add a GUI. So you can start adding more functionality there. And it just makes testing uh, so much easier. Um, that also reminds me, it, we should probably touch on some of those GUI constraints. But don't let me interrupt you. Please go right ahead. Right. So anyway, um, and so I'm going to show you some, a, a very handy little thing just using a built-in uh, 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 dialog that uh, Keyshot provides for selecting a folder. And you'll see why it's important in a second. So I'm going to select my import folder. And because we do a lot of work with CAD models uh, exported out of Pro Engineer or any CAD system, uh, we'll export those CAD models as STP files, which is a universal CAD. Uh, uh, exchange format, and I'll just select this folder here. Now I, I'll I have something selected here uh, in my Windows environment that I'll quickly choose just to save some time. And so I, I've selected what I've done here is I've selected my import folder and my folder for all the outputs for rendered images. And I can select my file types if I want to export JPEG or PNG. Etc. I can also select the file types that I want to see in the window or in the folder that uh, has all my content. So if I don't want to import STP files and say I've got a folder that's full of BIP files or KSP files, I can designate that in my settings here and my script. So in this case, I'm selecting an STP file and let's just hit the OK button. I'm not going to get into all of these other things. For those of you who are looking closely, you can see I've got, I can set the output image of, you know, my models and I can set the resolution quickly. I can set a camera distance if I want. I can set the number of samples for rendering, all sorts of things. And again, this is all up to your imagination. And this is, you know, this happens to be unique to one of the workflows that I've created, but you get the, you get the gist of it. And so I'll hit the OK button. And now you'll see the power of scripting when you're dealing with high volume workflows. I've got, you know, just in one folder, uh -huh. you know, almost a hundred different files here, right? So, yep. and these are CAD files that are coming out. And of course, they're more cryptic to the Keyshot user. And depending on your environment, these CAD files are going to be named differently and so forth. And so, you could the power of scripting allows you to kind of deal with the complexity of your, you know, if it's your customer or your in-house uh, workflows, right? If your customer has a unique part numbering uh, system, you're going to have to deal with all the different ways they uh, name and, uh, uh, you know, uh, provide numbers for their parts. So this happens to be the file format that may or may not be consistent depending on the time when the file was made. And so I just select one file up here and I'm going to import a file. Now I have another one of these little handy windows that I mentioned earlier <clears throat> and I can say, okay, what kind of rendering engine do I want to use for this particular workflow? I can say CPU product, CPU interior, GPU product, GPU interior. Again, instead of having to do this manually later, I can just select this on, on the fly to see if you know, if I notice a difference in the quality of my output, depending on the materials that I'm using and how complex the the uh, the render is, and I hit OK, and now the the script is doing a whole bunch of work in the background, and you'll see that it's running, and Keyshot mm -hmm. provides this feedback, and now it's going to start importing all the parts from the CAD file, and you'll see these part names pop up on the screen as it brings in each assembly and each part of the assembly.